So here we begin a chapter on carboxylic acids as well as carboxylic acid derivatives. Now, you know what a carboxylic acid is. So here you've got a carboxyl group. You've got your variable carbon chain here of any sort. You've got a carbonyl, carbon oxygen bond, and then it's bonded to a hydroxyl group. Uh, so this is your carboxylic acid. You've seen it before. Uh, the rest are what we call the carboxylic acid derivatives, and you can convert all of them into carboxylic acids. And in one way, shape, or form, you can convert a carboxylic acid into any of them. And we'll find out we can interconvert all of them in one way, shape, or form, maybe not directly, maybe sometimes directly, with each other. But they're carboxylic acid derivatives in that sense because we can turn them into carboxylic acids and vice versa. Uh, in this case, we'll start with the acid chloride, and the big difference here is you're just going to replace the hydroxyl group with something else. And we'll find out that something else, most of the time, uh, we'll view it as some form of leaving group, and we can just do all sorts of substitutions to interconvert them. So uh, if instead of an OH, you've got a chlorine or a bromine, those are acid halides, acid chlorides and bromides specifically. If instead of an OH, you've got a carboxylate group, uh, that's an acid anhydride, and they call it an acid anhydride. It's made from two carboxylic acid molecules. If they're identical, it's a symmetric anhydride. If they're not identical, it's an asymmetric. Uh, we've also got an ester here, and an ester has an alkoxide group here, the conjugate base of an alcohol, uh, instead of the OH. Uh, and then we have an amide, which has an amide group here, and these two R's I've got labeled R2 and R3 could be H's, carbon chains, whatever. And we'll find out that's the difference between primary and secondary amides and things of this sort, or unsubstituted amides, as the case may be. Finally, we got the nitrile. The nitrile is a little bit different than the rest, but technically, I can convert a carboxylic acid into a nitrile, and I can convert a nitrile into a carboxylic acid, one directly, one not so much directly, but I can still interconvert them. Uh, and so we're going to consider it a carboxylic acid derivative, even though there's no carbonyl here as well. Uh, but that's the last one. It's just got a cyano group. Uh, you've seen these before when we dealt with like SN2 reactions, um, but we'll definitely play with them just a little bit in this chapter. Now in this chapter, we're not going to spend too much time talking about any of the physical properties of most of the derivatives, uh, except for a couple illusions here and there, but I do want to point out a couple of things about carboxylic acids themselves. So first of all, we call them carboxylic acids for a reason, because they're acidic. Uh, a typical carboxylic acid, like acetic acid, uh, pK is about 4 to 5. Now, if you've got electron withdrawing groups nearby, okay, you can, you can definitely make them more acidic and lower that pK, but uh, for just a typical aliphatic carboxylic acid, pK is in the 4 to 5 range. Um, but that's old. Uh, we've already learned that in the past. I just wanted to bring that back up. But the new thing here is that carboxylic acids have unusually high boiling points, uh, something we might not expect just based on some comparisons here. So if we take a look at propanal here first. So propanal here is an aldehyde. If you notice, uh, pure propanal is not capable of hydrogen bonding. There's no OH bond anywhere in there. Uh, and so it's got a boiling point of 49 degrees Celsius. Now, one propanol, very similar in structure, because it does have an OH bond, is capable of hydrogen bonding and therefore has a significantly higher boiling point of 97 degrees. But if you move on to propanoic acid, one extra oxygen here, uh, it does raise the polarity a little bit and stuff like that, but all of a sudden you get a big jump to a boiling point of 146. And the reason is not really an increase in polarity or an increase um, you know, in the number of OH bonds, we still just got one OH bond, but what you do get is you can start having the molecules hydrogen bond with each other twice and dimerizing. And because the molecule kind of appears twice as big as it really is, it has a much greater surface area, much greater overall intermolecular forces, and a much higher boiling point as a result. So that's what's true about carboxylic acids. Just wanted to mention that briefly.